accomplish these two things, the requirement that they should submit an annual resolution plan and also the authority given to the FDIC to uh, resolve or dissolve uh, one part of this uh, city. Okay, the resolution plan in item one, in philosophy is similar to a living will. I don't know if in your countries or in your culture, you when you go to a hospital, the hospital will ask you to provide a living will. It's not required, but they encourage you. The, the idea behind a living will is to tell the hospital what kind of, um, towards the end of your life, if you want extraordinary measures, or if you just want to, to die quietly, rather than you know all the um, extra measures to keep you alive. Okay, so, so the living will is how the resolution plan has come to be known. Each big financial institution is supposed to submit every year a plan where they will say this is this are where all my assets are and these are all the transactions that interrelate me with all the other big institutions. Basically to lay out a plan so that you can die without the government doing extraordinary measures or doing a government bailout. Okay, so orderly resolution on, or orderly death if we want to use that analogy, would be hampered or obstructed if in a voting corporation there is a parent company um, that invests in many subsidiaries, a bank, an investment bank, an insurance company, brokerage firm, mortgage company. Okay, so in order for the the death of the big institution to become orderly and not systemically problematic, it is desirable that the parent company has a high liquidity. It would be a problem, in other words, if the cash level is very low or the liquid assets are very low, capital is very low, and the balance sheet is not, quote unquote, clean. Clean would mean that if you look at the balance sheet, they have cash, they have capital, and then everything else, else is their investment. What money they have invested in all their children or their subsidiaries. Okay. Second, the debt of these institutions would be prob problematic if there's so much interconnectedness. It would be difficult to unwind. The third, if there are many activities that involve different countries cross-border activities, because then you have to have the regulators of different countries to coordinate. And there's always a risk that each country's regulator would want to, the word used is ring fence, meaning try to protect the deposits of their own citizens. We all want to protect our own. So um, the more cross-border activities there are, the more complicated it will be. And lastly, the complexity and interconnectedness among the different firms within each country that belong to this umbrella. 